Hey everyone, I keep getting asked on Instagram and Facebook how I package my books as a merchant fulfilled seller on Amazon and eBay. Uh, and I thought I would make a quick video showing you how I make my own book mailers. Now these are a little time consuming to make, but once you've made dozens and dozens and dozens of them, uh, you can uh, get it down to less than 30 seconds to put together a book mailer. And book mailers can cost anywhere from 25 cents up to a dollar, depending on the brand and quality. Uh, and that really can eat into your bottom line, especially when you are just starting out. I don't plan to do it this way forever, but it's working really well for me. I source my boxes. I get them for free at the grocery store and Walmart. You just want to go and shop when they're stocking late at night. But anyway, without... Any further delay, I am going to switch over to a bird's eye view so you can see how I make these book mailers. Get it? Bird's eye view? No? Okay. Uh, I am using this smaller book here. Same thing applies with any, any size book, really. The only thing I'm going to point out is when you're using a box, selecting a box, you don't want to select like a really thick moving box. A thinner box, uh, something that's kind of like this here. Um, this is a, uh, for looks like it was for Dixie Cups from, I probably picked this up at Walmart. Uh, but if you use like a really thick moving box, you can use those, but those are really only going to work with your larger hardback books. When you're dealing with a soft cover book like this one, uh, you want to go with a thinner uh, box because it will wrap around the book much better. And this is plenty thick enough to protect it in transit. No different than sticking it in a box. If the box was going to get crushed and damage the book, then so would the book mailer and vice versa. I have probably shipped out over a hundred books so far, um, with this particular method. And, uh, I have not had a single person complain about the shipping. Actually, I have comments on my Amazon page about people happy about the shipping. I do wrap my books in plastic. This is just plastic wrap for food. Um, the only thing it does is if the UPS guy or FedEx guy or whoever leaves it out in the rain, it will protect the book. The other thing I like about it is that it protects the uh, it protects the book cover from any kind of wear or abrasions from you know wrapping it in the in the box. So anyway. Uh, also, if I have like a $50 book or more, in addition to wrapping it in plastic, I will first wrap it in like a packing paper. Um, really, I don't think it serves much of a purpose other than to show the buyer that I've taken a little extra care um, in packaging their product. But um, getting back to this, when you select the box size, you want something that is, uh, it needs to be wide enough. You could pack it this way as well. That's fine. My preferred method is like this, but if I if I'm you know tied with uh, the size of the box I'm working with, you can make it work the other way. Um, you want it to be so if you put this right in the middle and you lift it up, you just kind of imagine that you want to have at least the the thickness of your book left over over here, okay? Um, which we have, and then you also in length you want um, about three times the width of your book. So you want to be able to fold it over like that okay and all the rest of this is going to get cut off um so what i do first is i set i'm gonna move this here so you can see it a little better i set the book about a quarter inch inside here i don't put it right to the edge i like to have a little extra space there and then i put it in the middle this way and then i'll pull it off to the side and take my razor knife now this is kind of important um when you make your cut you don't want to be right on the corner right here okay um, you want to be off this way and off this way by about a quarter of an inch in each direction is what I like to do. Maybe a little less than a quarter inch, something like an eighth inch maybe is probably more accurate. And then you're just going to make your cut and pull it straight out. You want to make your cut as, as straight as you can. Okay. And then I just flip it around to do the same thing on this side. I reposition the book, um, to how I had it. Another thing is you want to try to make your cuts. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to get as close as you can. Um, you want them to be kind of even with each other. So there's that. So you're going to end up with just these two cuts here. At this point, you don't need your book anymore. You can set it off to the side. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to 
cut. I like to use a guide. This is just a piece of board I have from flooring that I have left over. I'll probably get something nicer at some point. Um, I don't usually use a guide unless I'm making a, a mailer like this for something really big. I've actually used this method for boxing up Guitar Hero guitar boxes. That, that I mean, you just scale them up and you get a really big box and it just saves you. You're not mailing empty space. But anyway, back to, uh, back to this. Um, when you make your lengthwise, you're going to cut this way. When you make that cut, you don't want to cut right at this right here. You don't want to cut here. You want to leave yourself a little bit of space because you can always trim it off later if you need to. Um, but uh, you can't put it back on. So right here is where the line is. I'm going to move it in about an eighth of an inch here. Okay. And uh, make it as straight as possible. And then I just score it. I don't actually cut it all the way through. I just score it. Like that. Do the same thing on this side again. Trying to keep this in frame. It's a little challenging. Right here is where my line is. I'm going to move over that by about an eighth of an inch. Make sure we're fairly level here. And then I'm going to score it again. Right. So what you end up with is you should be able to bend it like that. And then I'll just cut it the rest of the way from the back side. Same deal on this other side. I'm trying, this is not my normal way of cutting it. I'm trying to keep it in frame so you can see what I'm doing. This usually goes much faster. Kind of like trying to use a right-handed tool as a left-handed person or vice versa, you know. Anyway, all this here is going to get cut off so it doesn't matter if that's clean. So this is what you end up with. This is way too long. So I'm just going to take and get rid of some of it now so I'm not dealing with it. All right. This is still longer than you need, but this is about what you end up with, okay? Um, and then when I fold it over, my preference is to have the clean side out. So I'm gonna put my book here. I'm gonna put the spine of the book back here. It's the strongest part of the book. And then I'm just gonna center it in here. If you will notice here, this actually kind of moves outward this way a little bit. I do that on purpose because um, that way I don't end up shorting uh, the, the book and end up with exposed book. Like I said, it's real easy to trim that off later. Um, and actually, believe it or not, my cuts are usually much neater when I freehand it. This, I don't use the guide anymore unless it's something really big. But anyway, once again, we're gonna move our book in about a quarter inch from the back, maybe an eighth inch, I don't know. And then I just press firmly and I fold my book mailer around. Just fold these flaps up like this. Then just, you're gonna push down hard on this kind of, you don't wanna damage your book, but you wanna make sure that, you're, that you fold up around and you just kind of fold it over once. And then I pull it back and make sure it's real tight in there. And then I make my next fold pushing down over a second time. And that's it. Um, this is all excess here. I'm gonna cut this off real quick. Another quick, uh, trick is to pull these corners off. It'll make taping it up easy. Okay, slide that guy back down in there. Hold on a second. This here, which has has some sensitive information on it, so I'm not going to show it to the camera, but this is a little uh, note that I send to everybody saying thank you for your purchase has a QR code on it that is an affiliate link to my store should they use it I'll get a commission on that whether they buy from me or not so I include that all right so you see there's a little excess there so I just trim that off you you want to try to get that even see on this side it's nice and even um, and then I just take my tape gun
And I'll start right here. And pull it down and over. Same deal here. All right, so this is just the initial taping. I'm gonna run some tape this way here and probably one more this way. Um, but first I'm gonna print the label and stick it on there. But anyway, that shows you how uh, to create a book mailer. This one is not my cleanest job, but it, it gives you the idea. So um, it doesn't matter what size your book is, how small, much smaller than this, and I just stick it in a padded envelope. Um, but uh, yeah, even the, even the really big books, I do the same way. So. Hopefully that educates you a little bit and helps you, especially if you're just getting started out. I hope you took something from that video um, and you learned how to get your books out. Um, like I said, it's been working great for me. Um, it'll save you a little money, especially if you're just getting started. Um, that's really important to be able to save uh, some money. And it also saves the headache of having to source uh, book mailers. Um, if you liked the video, please uh, give me a thumbs up comment if you have any suggestions or if you liked it um and uh please please subscribe that'd be really cool uh i would love to have a new subscriber all right until the next video see you later check out this is my camera rig right here high-tech stuff here work with what you got